Welcome to another lesson on linear second order homogeneous differential equations. In this lesson, we'll discuss finding a general solution to a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients when the characteristic equation has two complex roots. So in our previous lesson, we started by defining a second order ordinary differential equation given here by equation one and then if equation one fits the form of equation two, we have a linear second order differential equation. And then finally, if g of x, the function on the right is equal to zero, we have a linear second order DE that is also homogeneous or homogeneous. And in our case, the coefficients won't be functions of x, they'll be constants, so our linear second order homogeneous differential equations are going to fit this form here. If they fit this form, we can find the general solutions by determining the characteristic equation and then finding the solutions to the characteristic equations, also called the characteristic values. So if our differential equation fits this form here, using the values of a, b, and c, we form the characteristic equation given here. Notice it's quadratic, and therefore the roots will take one of three forms. We may have two distinct real roots, and in this case, the general solution would be in this form here, which we've already discussed. If we have two real but equal roots, the general solution would fit this form here, which we discussed in the previous lesson. And in this lesson, we'll discuss how if the characteristic equation has two complex roots in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, the general solution will be in this form. So our goal here is to determine where this form comes from. So to begin again, if our differential equation fits this form here, we create the characteristic equation given here where the values of r will help us find the general solution. So instead of x, this would actually be r, and so r is gonna take the form of alpha plus or minus beta i. So using r sub one equals alpha plus beta i, and r sub two equals alpha minus beta i, we could perform substitution into the form of the general solution here when we have two real distinct roots giving us this form here. But notice how these functions would be complex valued functions and we prefer to have real valued functions. So our goal here is to write the sum of these complex valued functions as a sum of real valued functions. And to do this, we'll use Euler's formula as well as some rules for exponents. So to review, here's Euler's formula. And notice if you replace the exponent with negative ix, we would have cosine negative x plus i sine negative x. But since the cosine function is even, cosine negative x is equal to cosine x, and sine negative x is equal to negative sine x, giving us minus i sine x. And now for the rules of exponents, notice here we have a sum of exponents. So if we distribute, and because we're adding exponents, we can break this up as a product where we have e raised to the power of alpha x times e raised to the power of beta xi. And when we have a difference, we would just have a negative exponent in the second factor. And now we're going to apply Euler's formula to the second factor of what we'll call y sub one and y sub two, which made up the sum of our general solution here. So looking here at y sub one, here we have e raised to the power of bxi, which when applying Euler's formula, or this first form, would give us this sum here. And then if we distribute, we would have this sum. And then for y sub two, we apply the variation of Euler's formula to the second factor, giving us this difference and then distributing, giving us this. And now for the next step, so now we'll take this new form of y sub one and y sub two onto the next slide. And remember, we know that these sums of multiples of these are also solutions from the principle of superposition. So now we're gonna find the sum of y sub one and y sub two and their difference. So looking at the sum first, notice how the second terms are opposites so these two terms would have a sum of zero. Let's go ahead and call the sum of y sub one and y sub two u sub one. So u sub one would be equal to two e raised to the power of alpha x 
cosine beta x. And then we find the difference. Notice how the first terms would be opposites. So this difference would be zero. And here we're subtracting a negative, which becomes plus. So let's call this u sub two, which would be equal to two i e to the alpha x sine beta x. So notice how the sum gave us one solution and sort of the difference. Well, just as we said before, due to the principle of superposition, if we have two solutions here, then the sum of multiples of these would also be solutions. Therefore, if the characteristic equation has solutions alpha plus or minus beta i, the general solution to the homogeneous linear second order differential equation with constant coefficients would be in this form here. Notice how this is just a constant times u sub one plus a constant times u sub two. So going back to a previous slide, this takes care of the third case where if the characteristic equation has two complex roots, our general solution will be in this form here. So we'll perform substitution for alpha and beta. Let's finish by looking at an example. We want to find the general solution to the given differential equation. Notice how it fits the form of a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So the first step is to form the characteristic equation. Notice a, b, and c are one. Therefore, the characteristic equation would be r squared plus r plus one equals zero, which is not factorable, so we'll have to apply the quadratic formula given here. And again, because a, b, and c are all one, we would have x equals negative one plus or minus the square root of one squared minus four times one times one divided by two times one, which would just give us negative one plus or minus, this is gonna be square root of negative three, or i square root three divided by two. Now we want this to be in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, so let's go ahead and write this as negative one half plus or minus square root three divided by two i. So alpha, is equal to negative one half and beta is equal to square root three over two. Which means a general solution is going to be y of x equals c sub one times e raise the power of alpha times x or negative one half times x, which we can write as negative x divided by two times cosine beta times x which would be square root three divided by two times x, or square root three x divided by two, plus c sub two times e to the power of alpha x, which again is negative x divided by two, times sine beta x, which would be square root three x divided by two. So we're gonna go ahead and stop here for this lesson. Hopefully this helps explain where this form of the general solution comes from when the characteristic equation has two complex solutions. There are more videos that show additional examples. I hope you found this helpful.